today we're gonna to talk about the cabinet installer. To me, the installer, that is your key piece. The installer is, I would say, the queen on your kitchen remodeling chessboard. If you have an average installer versus an excellent installer, there's a huge difference. And trust me, I know I pay the price of having uh, mediocre or average installers versus the elite installers. And you could tell, you could tell based on the, the trim, the toe kicks, the quarter rounds, and I would say the biggest difference is the crown. Uh, I've seen crown that was installed by average to mediocre installers, and I mean, it was just terrible. Um, so installing crown is a, a huge deal. All right, but we'll, we'll just start from the top. So the first thing that your installer will help you is they will check the measurements that the cabinet company uh, actually, they, they will probably send someone out or if you did the measurements yourself. So they'll check your measurements or they'll check the measurements of the cabinet company that you purchased the cabinets from. So it's always best to have two separate eyes looking at the measurements so that way, you know, things are, are missing or things are too wide or too tall or the ceiling heights. You always want to have at least two eyes looking at that. So the installer, if it's a good one, they'll check those measurements to make sure that you have everything uh, that you need for your kitchen whenever you go and purchase the cabinets. The next thing is they're going to double check everything once the cabinets are on site. So once the cabinets are on site, they should have a list of all the cabinets and they should have the, the entire rendering and layout. So they'll be able to check and make sure that they have everything. So the worst thing you could have is you start an install and you're missing toe cakes or you're missing a piece of crown or, or you're missing a base cabinet, you're missing a wall cabinet. It's the worst thing that could happen. So a good installer, they're going to make sure that you have everything on site because I've had situations where I purchased cabinets from out of state and it's taken me weeks to get those cabinets. So if you're missing, you know, any amount of cabinets or trim, I mean, it may take weeks again to get the, the other pantry or the other wall cabinet, the other base cabinet or whatever trim that you need. And what if they have delays? What if they're behind? So now you have a kitchen that's half complete and you're waiting for them to make that other delivery from out of state. It could take days, it could take, take weeks. I've heard sometimes it could take months. Uh, you have some of these cabinet companies that are being delivered from Germany, from overseas, from Vietnam, from Asia. So you're always gonna have those issues of delays. So having the right carpenter or the right installer to double check all the measurements so before the order is placed, you already have everything that's coming to you correct. And then also whenever it gets there, they should be able to have a checklist and go over all the items before they even start the install. So that's number one. The next thing is uh, a good installer, they're going to be able to assemble the cabinets correctly. I've assembled cabinets myself, I assemble boxes. I'm not great. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the expert at this. And so there are like little nuances that you could tell. So if you have someone that's installing the cabinets, good ones they'll make sure that all of the boxes are butted up against each other they're connected they're screwed together uh, they're gonna make sure everything's level so another telltale sign is a good installer they're gonna have a laser level so whenever they bring in the laser level they're making sure everything is even on you know pretty much the, on your entire wall and if it's not even it could be an issue with the floor so they may have to add fillers or they may have to add some spacers to, to kind of raise those cabinets up and they can hide that so a really good installer will make sure that the cabinets are level up against the wall. There's nothing worse than someone installing, basing it off of what's currently there and not making sure the cabinets are level. The next thing is they're also going to make sure that everything is square. I've had this issue before where doors got delivered, they weren't squared or the cabinets weren't completely squared and it could throw off some of the design whenever the countertop company comes in to install the countertops. They may have an issue putting the countertops on top of the cabinets because they're not completely squared. They're not completely flat because they didn't use a leveler and they did not um, level the, ca the cabinets before they installed the countertops. So that's another thing that you want to look at, making sure that everything's connected. Next is, I would say the trim. The trim is huge. So whenever we're talking about trim, we're talking about the toe kicks. We're talking about the baseboards. We're talking about the scribe molding. We're talking about the quarter rounds. And of course, we're talking about the crown molding. The crown molding is huge, but we'll get to that in a second. So whenever they're connecting, typically uh, a panel or any type of trim, the tallest is, or longest gonna be is 96 inches. So the good uh, installers, they'll be able to hide those gaps where let's, you know, the tall, again, it's only gonna be 96 inches. So if you have 
a set of cabinets that are 110, 120 inches, of course there's gonna be a seam somewhere, but the good ones are great at hiding those seams. Also, whenever you put the toe kicks in, the good ones, they're great at concealing the nail holes. Obviously you gotta, you know, drive a nail through the quarter rounds in order to secure it to the cabinets or secure it to the floor. The good ones, they're able to hide those nails. A lot of times they'll use putty, they'll use the touch up paint, and uh, they'll have it completely paint ready. The mediocre installers, they'll tell, hey, go send your painters out there. Go send the painters and they'll touch it up. That's not the painter's responsibility. That's the installer's responsibility to make sure that the trim and quarter round and everything is, is where it's supposed to be and concealed and you don't have nail holes sticking out. And now I would say is crown's a huge deal. Crown is a huge deal because this is the difference between an average installer and an excellent installer. Uh, how they're able to miter cut uh, the trim, you'll be able to see it. It's hard for me to like really describe or discuss it. You'll just see a bad job versus a good job and you can see here in the, in the video, a, a bad job versus a good job. A really good installer, they're gonna take their time on the crown, they're not gonna rush it. You don't wanna rush them either and uh, if they have a really good job, you'll be able to tell um, it, it's seamless. Uh, it looks like it's almost one piece that just got bent. You're not gonna see a lot of gaps. You're not gonna see nail holes. And really good ones, they like to attach the cabinets or the crown from the back. So that's what a lot of the really good ones do. How do you find uh, these really good installers? Uh, it's difficult. Um, I would say of the installers I've used, I would I would only rate probably two that are a 10. Whenever you use a media, mediocre installer, you have to spend a lot more money because now you gotta buy more crown because they messed up the crown. You probably have to buy more uh, fillers, quarter rounds, different types of trim because they probably miscalculated. So now you're paying more trip fees. So now you're paying someone to, you know, go back to the shop or go back to the uh, manufacturing office and deliver uh, more trim. So now your delivery costs go up. Also, your delays go up because now you're thinking that you're going to be able to wrap this job up. You already have the template scheduled. Now you got to push back the template a week or two because the cabinets aren't done. I've had a situation where uh, we had to go back in and take down all the crowns because the crown was just done so so poorly. And it was my fault. Uh, I should have sat on the project until he was done. Contractor, he's like, the installer said, hey, we're, we're, we're done. We just gotta add some crown on this side. And I was like, he was like, yeah, we'll fix it. And I was like, okay, I guess he'll fix it. And he sent me the pictures. And then the client sent me the pictures. And I was like, yeah, it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look too bad. It was terrible. <laughs> I went out to the client's house because uh, they, they were very upset. So I went out to the client's house. I'm like, let me go see what's going on. And there were huge gaps. There were huge gaps in between the crown and the cabinet box. Uh, where it was mitered cut, you could see the nails kind of piecing out. Uh, you saw the nail holes. Uh, the nail holes weren't filled in. It wasn't touched up. It was just bad. Uh, and now here's the thing. By doing it the wrong way, now that crown can't be reused. Like we gotta tear that crown down and put all new crown. We can't reuse that. It's already been cut, it's already been used, so there's not much we can do with it. Um, so it costs me more money because now I gotta buy more crown. Now I gotta send another installer out to install it the correct way. And um, it upsets your customers. Now your customers, now they have a delay of a week or two because the initial installer didn't install it right the first time. So my recommendation is, if you're working with a new installer, even if you just saw pictures of their work, you really have to sit on that project. You have to sit on that project because once they're done, like, hey, they're gonna send you pictures, like, hey, we're done, just sell me. You gotta sit on that project and you have to watch it like a fine tooth comb. You have to look at all the connections, the edges, you have to look at everything. And here's the thing, they wanna get paid, but if you're a contractor like me and you do, terrible work or they do terrible work on your behalf, the client's not going to pay you. Or if you're a client and you're wanting to get the work done, now you're going to have to be cycling through people to get it done the right way. Having the right installer is huge. Uh, if you want to find out the two installers, the only two installers now that I use, uh, go ahead and uh, DM me and I'll, I'll let you know. Or if you want us to, to do the install for you. Now, they're with me full time because having some terrible installs before, I'm not going to take the risk and use someone cheaper. It's not worth it. Always end up spending a lot more money.